the next film that I'll be talking about uh, this week celebrating Disney video. I, I did a crossover recently with Henry Mockingbird and Henry dared me to watch this movie. I'm Henry R. Mockingbird, your host with the mustache, signing off. And if you excuse me, I got a telephone call to make to an old YouTube buddy. Hello, Jacob. It's me, Henry. Hey, Henry, how you doing? I got a bad 90s movie for you to review. Bad 90s movie? It's a 90s comedy worse than Biodome. A movie worse than Biodome? It can't be. What is it? Meet the Deedles. No. I'm sorry, buddy. This movie is your problem now. Honestly, to be fair, I never actually saw Biodome. I just heard of its infancy, and I put that as part of the joke in that video. But yeah, let's talk about Meet the Deedles. Disney Pictures invite you to go wild. Cool. A bear. A bear! Ah! And meet the Deedles. Ah! My stepdad's a little overprotective, but it's not like he's some complete psycho. Get away from the girl! Meet the Deedles. All right, I'm sure Ramsey Alley, Henry Mockingbird, has been dying for me to talk about this film. Meet the Deedles. This was released in 1998. Directed by Steve Boyum. Let me look at this uh, guy's directing credits. Uh, he's mostly done Disney Channel original movies. He's also directed Mom's Got a Date with a Vampire, which I did a collab with Anthony A. Perez on over on his channel. Also directed Johnny Tsunami, Motocross, and Stepsister from Planet Weird. So this is mostly a Disney Channel guy. I guess this is one of the few theatrical films this guy has done. But this movie is so infamous. This movie was poorly received when it came out. I saw it has 7% on Rotten Tomatoes. It flopped so bad at the box office. And the movie did so bad that it never got a DVD release. And the only way you can check out Meet the Deedles is through its streaming on Disney Plus. That yes, let me say that again. There is no DVD release for Meet the Deedles. The only way you can actually watch this film is on Disney Plus. Yeah. We're in for some rough stuff with Meet the Deedles, but let me read the synopsis via letterboxed. Two surfers end up as Yellowstone Park Rangers and have to stop a former ranger who is out for revenge. Okay, so Meet the Deedles. When I, when I was dared pretty much to watch this movie, because Ramsey kept telling me it was a terrible film, I'm like, it can't be that bad of a movie. I've seen some bad comedies in my life. Uh, I haven't seen Biodome, like I jokingly said in his part of the video, but I've seen Jack and Jill. And even Disney's made some stinker comedies. Uh, Animated Wise, Chicken Little, uh, Old Dogs is a terrible comedy. And there's been some other, there's been some Disney Channel movies that have been bottom of the barrel too, particularly the Teen Beach movies, which were both terrible. So going in, I'm like, this can't be that horrible, right? Well, I don't think it's the worst comedy that Disney has ever done or it's the worst comedy I've ever seen. But it's still pretty bad. So, what's interesting going into this movie is uh, you have the two Deedles, uh, these two twin brothers who are like these surfer bros who get pretty much expelled from school because they're too into surfing and they slack off and they don't really care about actually maturing or growing up in life or anything like that. And the dad pretty much forces them to actually 
do something before they he gets like their blessing or whatever. And the interesting thing is, uh, one of the two Deedles is played by Paul Walker. And this came out, I'd like to say, three years before his breakout role in The Fast and the Furious, which really fascinates me because this movie could have easily been an easy career killer for Paul Walker before he even got started. But thankfully, he rebounded and, like I said, starred in the Fast and the Furious, and people love him in those movies. He was the heart of that franchise, and you know, even though I feel like that franchise has gone downhill, Paul Walker, may he rest in peace, was the heart of that franchise, and I highly respect him for that. Even though I give him credit uh, for trying to really, uh, for, to really. Uh, get into this character. Like, his performance isn't bad. But the Deedle characters themselves are so awful. Like, I, I couldn't stand either of these characters. You could tell this was Disney's attempt to copy the formula that other studios had with films like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Dumb and Dumber, and Wayne's World. And this film failed miserably to cash in on that formula. Not only... Could I not stand Phil and Stu Deedle? But uh, their obnoxiousness, their cringiness, and some questionable behavior that these two characters made throughout the course of the movie uh, made me groan throughout the course of this entire movie. Uh, I, I couldn't stand the decisions of these characters. Uh, the surfer puns were ridiculous and beyond cringe. Uh, they didn't have that endearing quality that Bill and Ted have or uh, Wayne and Garf had, or even, I didn't, I'm not the biggest Dumb and Dumber fan, but even Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels had good chemistry together, and there were some legit funny moments in this movie. I did not laugh once in this movie. This was such a painfully unfunny mess. This was clearly made for, like, very, very, a very young audience, like, under 10, I would say, because the slapstick in this movie is so pandering that it made me, I don't know how to say it. Like it was so pandering that I struggled to sit through this movie. I thought the, the humor, I think they tried way too hard to do so much slapstick in the film that it failed to get me into the story. And plus, like I said, the characters make these questionable decisions throughout the course of the movie. Like they steal clothes from female park rangers they pose as these park rangers to get into a position that uh, they got into by luck. And they somehow manipulate people into thinking they're legit park rangers, even though it's clear they have no clue how being a park ranger works. And yet somehow uh, the people at the park are oblivious that these characters are clueless and makes them even dumber in the process. Uh, none of these characters are enjoyable in the slightest. Even the deals even steal uh, food from the uh, the visitors of the park because everyone thinks these two characters that they're posing are naturalists. They live in nature, so they eat the stuff in the woods and stuff, and they just steal candy and other goods. So, yeah, I couldn't get into this movie. It was horrible. The humor didn't land. Even the villains, yeah, there's villains in this movie were absolutely pathetic. Guess who they got to play the villains in this movie, you guys? Uh, you got Dennis Hopper. That's the main bad guy. But his number two, and this, this, this destroyed me when I saw this. Guess who the number two is in this movie? Robert England. Yes, Freddy Krueger himself plays a villain in this terrible movie. And they dumb him down to playing an absolute idiot in this movie. I I guess I gotta give the actor credit for trying to go outside. You know what people know him best. You know, playing Freddy Krueger, scary bad guy in the slasher franchise. But uh, it was it was a rough watch. It was a rough watch. I didn't care for either of the characters. The plot was so dumb because it was like. 
uh, Dennis Hopper is like a disgraced employee at Yellowstone. And so he's trying to destroy Yellowstone by invading it with prairie dogs. Yeah, that's the plot of the movie. <laughs> that, that don't even make sense. How are prairie dogs threatening? And that's the plot of the movie. Am I losing my mind talking about a garbage Disney comedy? Like, this isn't the worst thing I've seen, but it's still terrible. I don't have much left to say on this movie. I didn't care for it. Even the visual effects are bad. Like, some of the green screen shots for a comedy film are some of the worst I've seen. There's a scene where the two Deedles are surfing down a river to save somebody. But the, the shots look so fake. It looks like the two characters are photoshopped into the frame. And it took me out of the movie. It was terrible. I did not enjoy this movie. I don't recommend it unless you're curious. But even then, I don't think it's so bad it's good. This is still a bad movie. I didn't laugh once at any of the jokes in the movie. Even though I laughed once in Chicken Little, uh, Chicken Little I still think is worse because I hated the mean streak in that movie. And for Disney animation standards, it's pathetic. This is just a bad comedy, no more, no less. Even though it's not the all-time worst, it's still a bad movie. And I do not recommend it in the slightest. Uh, but again, if you want to check it out on Disney+, Plus, be my guest. So... Uh, I'll be giving this film a 1 out of 5 on Letterboxd, and I gave it a 14 out of 100 on my 100-point scale. All right, looks like we got quite a bit of comments on here. Ha ha, that was awesome. I think he was talking about the, uh, uh, the Henry Mockingbird clip. I've never heard of Meet the Deals. Looks awful. Yeah, it is awful. Is it better or worse than Battlefield Earth? It is. I, I no Battlefield Earth is still worse. Uh, that one is just absolute torture. This is just an unfunny comedy. Uh, Biodome is bad. There were a slew of bad Pauly Shore movies like Encino Man. Son-in-Law, Jury Duty, and In the Army Now in the 90s. The only thing I've seen with Polly Shore in it is his minor role in a goofy movie. You know, it's the leaning chow tower of Cheza. Uh, <coughs> Polly Shore makes me cough. Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Yeah, he's in this movie. Dennis Hopper is one of the great villain actors. He grew up in Dodge City, Kansas. I'm pretty sure that's close to where you live. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he's done some good villain roles, but not in this movie. No, not in this movie, and it's sad. 